undergroundhiphopblog.com exclusive. Mic check, one, two, one, two, what up? It's Pause One representing undergroundhiphopblog.com. We're outside the Yost Theater, Santa Ana. You already know who that man is. You know who they are. I don't even got to introduce you guys. Let them know. That's right, Mr. Hyde and Necro over here. Necro, just Necro. Over here. what up? You know what I mean? We up in California. You know what I mean? It's a great place. I love it. Fan show love. You know what I mean? Girls suck beach. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all you porn stars. You lazy pieces of shit. You fucking do nothing with your lives except spread your legs. And that's why I like you. You fucking pig. But back to the hip hop. Mad shout out to Underground Hip Hop Blog, Blacklisted, Brian, Victor, his brother Irv Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Pause one. You know what I mean? Everybody's showing love. You know, that's what I tell, you know, Hyde when he says something fucking gay. I'm like, pause. Chill. <laughs> it was funny. That's the fucking New York slang. So when I was out there doing my thing, I was like, yo, it's totally different, bro. We don't say that shit on the West. So it's. It's, yeah, but it's funny though the homies, sticky fingers. Everybody always like yo pause sky zoo, and I'm like, I always hated saying that statement. You know what I mean? Because I don't like to like follow like slangs unless I really like the slang. But um, sometimes like I used to hate that's what's up. Yeah, that's what I used to fucking think that was gay. Right, I I fucking hated it, and then I started being like. That's what's up. <laughs> Yo, that girl's high. Yeah, that song's cool. Yeah, that's what's up. Fuck it. You can't beat a joint, it, right? Fuck it. So, yeah. Yo, high's right. You know what I mean? Evil is anointed. Get disappointed. <laughs> Guillotine to your spleen. You get you defeated. You can't beat, beat it. Join it. Join it. That's just how it works sometimes. We just fucking tore it down. Up in fucking Cali, L.A., Santa Ana. We back. Three years of not touring. Baby got back. We here again. My anaconda don't want none. <clears throat> what do we do? My Santa Ana want some. <laughs> Yo, the one thing you guys did that was really dope was uh, when you rhymed the bars and then to see who rhymes faster. That shit was fucking bananas. For all the people that didn't show up, you guys fucking missed out. So the question I had, the, the question I had was, you kind of already answered it. How's it feel being back out here on the West? You guys said, what, three years? Yeah, last time I was out here was uh, um, pay dues or the whiskey. We played the we played the whiskey last time, and I think like Chino XL opened, and um my homie Chino Chino XL opened for that that last time we did the whiskey, and then uh, last time we did uh, pay dues was 2010. Yeah. Shout out to Murs, respect for putting me on that, you know, because that that meant a lot to me being on on like big tours that involve a lot of groups. You know what I mean? Because it's like. It shows more relevancy, you know what I mean? Like, like, and but then again, this show tonight was pinnacle because there's nothing like headlining. He, if you can't headline, a lot of rappers, you know what I mean? They, they're cool in their little clicks or the, or, you know, like when they're opening up a tour or whatever. But if you could headline a fucking show, you know, I mean, you know, like, like, it don't mean you're anybody special. It just means from a perspective that there's people that fuck with you enough, you know what I mean? And and, and that's a blessing. So be, to be able to come out here, and uh, you know be respected enough to be brought out is a fucking honor for me. I feel open about that, you know what I mean? So I feel Cali gives like utmost love. Like one of the one of the best spots we we do anywhere, they always got love for us, Cali. I mean whether it's LA, wherever the fuck we go, San Diego, San Francisco, all the sh I mean we did runs all over Cali and everywhere we go, I mean I, I see nothing but love for us, so you know, we got love back, man. We're going to keep coming out here. You keep wanting us, we're going to keep coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm especially going to keep coming in the, the young girls that, that want me. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking like 21-year-olds that they want mature dick. You know what I mean? Because I'll tell you why they want mature dick. Because they're sick of dealing with little shitheads. So they fucking, you know, they deal with the little shithead for a week or two. He tries to slap them, whatever. They want to come cuddle with a gangster. You know what I'm saying? And, and they like... When I take pictures of them while they're sucking dick. So I hope nobody gets a hold of my iPhone and loads that up. I don't want to get my shit loaded up. But this girl said I had a big dick. Wherever the fuck she is. She's like, you're so big. I'm like, really? But, you know, shout out to the dick sucking bitches from Cali. You know what I mean? And um, no disrespect because fucking that's what we do. Yo, you guys said that the show was a pinnacle, right? You guys did some stuff you guys never usually do live, right? Yeah. So all the people that came out, they got a dose of some... some. We, we try to switch up the set list. You know, every time we come out with a new tour or whatever, 
you know, we, we incorporated. He, he actually sat down, took the time to do a survey on Facebook and Twitter and all social media of what the fans wanted. And some of the, the, the results that we got back were like, wow, really? They want that? They want that? And we're looking at each other like, oh, fuck, we never did that. So we, we did, you know, we, we ain't lazy about shit, you know, and we try to give the fans what they want, you know. I ain't going to front. I fucked up mad songs tonight. You know what I'm saying? I just I keep it real. I, I, one, one, thing about, one thing about me is I got knowledge of self, so I know all my fuck-ups. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not delusional thinking I'm the shit or I'm not or whatever. I kind of know what my strengths are and weaknesses. You know, we, we wanted to do songs like Dead Body Disposal, Poetry in the Streets, but when you never do them live... It's like trying out a first move. Let me just finish, though. Let me make my point. You know what I mean? When, 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 you, when you do something the first time, you got to build up and get used to it. You also got to see if the shit works live. A lot of times, I will, will always do the more violent uh, mosh pit tracks and avoid tracks like a poetry in the streets because it's more slow. You know what I mean? And it's, and it, yeah, like I need drugs. It's some shit that I never really did before. But I figured it's that... But when I ask the fans what they want to hear, fans want that. But then you wonder, is it the fan that sits home on his ass that might not come to a show? And the kid that comes to the show might want the prefix for death or the brutal shit. So it's tricky. You got to figure out. You got to analyze and try. And try. So tonight, we tried some shit. It's a trick uh, to rock a rhyme. It's, yeah, it's a trick to pop a nine and pop a nine into your spine. It's sickly, like John Hinckley or some shit. I fucked that shit up, but I did that on the DMC track. Shout out to DMC. But um, yeah, man. You know, we tried a couple of things tonight, and uh, sometimes we fuck up. But uh, bottom line, we take risk in life. You got to be a risk taker. If you ain't a risk taker, then you you pretty much living a life of uh, of safe. You know what I mean? You basically you a pussy. You know what I mean? There's psych. Listen, there's psycho and there's logical. If all your shit is, is logical, you never do any, you don't take any risk. If all your shit is psycho, you end up in prison for life. You got to be psycho and logical. And, and that's what it is with trying new fucking ideas, you know what I mean, and, and, and new songs. So, you know what I mean, you try some shit out. But overall, I judge it in the end, are the fans happy? Yeah, yeah the fans seem happy tonight, you know what I mean? Well, are you happy? That's all that matters, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, hold the post up. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, you... you You know, that's what hip hop's about. You gotta just get on the stage, murder it, and and, and you know, and and give your all. You know what I mean? And, and and at least you know, not lip sync or whatever. You know, we do our lyrics. I think like the imperfection sometimes because nobody's perfect. The, especially you know, we ain't, and and neither are our fans, and they fucking they relate to us because we're, we're down to earth. So there's like beauty in the imperfections and shit. So they bug out with us. If we if we fuck up on stage, they we're gonna laugh with them. Whatever it, it happens, they know you know. But they they feel the, they feel the love, they feel the energy, and we feel it back, and we vibe off it. So. That's what real real artists do, and it's part of hip hop. That was gonna be the next question, right? <laughs> a lot of shit. One thing I noticed too was, cause I was here a little early, and as soon as the doors opened, the line went from being here to right in front of the merch booth. That was yeah. definitely dope. And one of the songs you guys did, speaking of the songs, was Underground. I wanted to ask both of you guys individually what your uh, definition of underground is. Well, I'll give you an example. You know, um, there's certain groups or, or people that claim that they're underground. You know what I mean? But like, then these motherfuckers got you know, MTV songs out. You know what I mean? Or have had major label deals. You're not really underground if 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 you was signed to a major label. You're not really underground if you uh, had MTV video hits. You're not really underground if you've had millions pumped into you. You know what I mean? What's underground? Underground to me would be someone who's independent who actually fucking struggles, who invested money in his own shit, you know what I'm saying, who, who just more of a struggle, you know what I mean, that's underground, you're not underground if motherfuckers, corporations have invested major money in you, so I feel I'm underground because I've never been signed to a major label, I've never even really had an offer, so to be out here and have fans that fuck with me is really from my hustle, it's just me fucking, I learned from Master P, Benson P was the first dude, and I started watching Cash Money in them right at the beginning when them dudes was like 98, 97, 90, you know, and they were selling out the trunk. And nobody wanted to fuck with me because they was like, what, nobody wants to sign white boys. And my own lawyer was involved in the Eminem deal. So I'm like in the office doing a Fat Beats vinyl deal, and he's like, we're about to sign this dude, and he's going to be the biggest shit ever. And I'm like, but I was giving you my demos. The fuck, you know what I mean? So like, I already knew it was only going to be one white kid allowed to be blow up. Cause that's the way it works. They let first is Vanilla Ice, then is Eminem. Same thing with Latinos. You see Big Pun, 
it's either Big Pun or Fat Joe. Every other Latino gets shitted on, and it got to be put in a box, you know, like like that. When when you know what I mean. So if if you really analyze that, it's crazy. You'll have like a thousand black rappers, you know what I mean. Some are dope, you you know, but and some are garbage. But you never see white or Latino rappers blow the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like it happened, like I said, at Eminem or a Big Pun, and then you don't see shit for ten, fifteen years. So when I seen that there was gonna be no fucking chance for me to get signed or get big like that. I knew I had to do it myself. It was it was it was the only choice. You know what I'm saying? It was like you gotta fucking grind now. And plus, Master P was saying crazy shit. He was like, if you sell, you know, a record, you'll get eight dollars or nine dollars off of it, and and then you only cost a dollar. And he was like, I'm doing this on you know moving ten fifteen thousand units at the trunk. And that just I was like, oh fuck, that's kind of crazy. I didn't even think of it because you don't think of that because there ain't no books that tell you that. And when Puffy was doing it and Shug was doing it, because they was doing it, them, them dudes, they were one of the first independents. Like, Shug is ill. If you look back, like, in, he's one of the first indie dudes. He, he They wouldn't give jewels, though. They, like, you, you could read their interviews, they weren't telling you. Master P started telling motherfuckers. Like, he was breaking it down. So, you know, when we say underground, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, I just feel like some people, they, they've had major fucking money put into them. So and then they claim like yeah we that real underground you're not really you're kind of you're, you're commercial, but then again what does it matter in the end of the day underground commercial it's really about people liking you if they like you are you underground, you know like these girls over here they like me they want to fuck me and blow me, am I underground? I bet you they listen to Little Wayne on the low too though, but you know what I'm saying like 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 they're listening to commercial and underground at the same time. It, it's the box that everyone, you know, you know who puts it in the box? The fucking media. The magazines, these bullshit ass magazines, XXLs and sources. All they try to do is shit on, you know what I mean? Any, anybody that does anything underground, or if, if you're not major label backed, they act like you're not relevant. Or that's too underground, or that's, you know what I mean? And then, and then all these idiots believe it. So you'll have some chicks that'll be like, well, what is that necro shit? Nah, I don't listen to that. I listen to blah, blah, blah. But the re- reality is, it's just music. A beat is a beat. What makes someone's beat more official than my beat? The way it's released. People will act like it's bigger because it got released onto MTV and my shit didn't. But the reality is I could burn most of these dudes. But it's not like they give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like they don't care. You you could say all day I'll burn people. And at the end of the day, most people will say, well, what, what's your sales? So there's really no argument. You can't compete. Only thing you could ever really do is worry about your own shit and make it successful. That's like really the only fucking thing you could do. You know what I mean? And if you happen to be bigger than everybody else, then you do it. You know what I'm saying? But 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 like, yeah, so in a way, titles and all that, you know what I mean? I, but I, yeah, I'm definitely underground. But anyway, I, you know, I can babble forever about hip hop. Like when I talk hip hop, I get deep and go out debate motherfuckers. Mr. Hyde, let them know your definition of underground. Well, he covered the aspect, you know, that, that kind of aspect. <clears throat> the mainstreams and, the, and the, you know, the commercial stuff and shit like that. For me, being underground like is like all of us in the struggle who've been slept on. You know what I mean? Like in any kind of way, and and we and we have the fucking strength and the integrity and the pride to keep doing our own creative shit. Like just because somebody tells me, "Oh, hi, you'll never get played on a fucking you know on the radio, Hot 97 or whatever the fuck it is. You'll never be on MTV." You know, I don't give a fuck because I'm, I stay true to myself and my art and my craft. So I don't let people tell me. You know what to do, or any kind of creative control. People, t- you know, the, the the masses get brainwashed of of what's good and what's you know, and it's all the same reprocessed garbage. So me sitting in the house, if I want to write a rhyme about fucking, you know, a prisoner on death row, or a rhyme about, you know, personifying myself as a homeless person, that's outside the box, and it's novelty and it's topic shit coming from, you know, what I feel like rhyming about, what I want to hear. If I want to write a rhyme about, you know, slicing somebody into fucking a million bits, I'm gonna do it. Cause that's what I want to hear. I'm influenced by, you know, gore movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, shit like that. And that, that's some shit that probably won't get played. But you know what? It's, it's all about the fans. There's a, fa- there's a fan base for everything. Gigi Allen back in the day was well, taking will, shits on stage. It will get played on YouTube. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. YouTube is the market. But there is a market for everything, and it's all about expanding our market and, and expanding our, our, our fans. So us coming out here, it's going to travel word of mouth, man. Like people are, yo, they fucking destroyed it. Yeah. Bring them back. 
And, and, and it, ain't all, it doesn't matter. We can be underground, but we're going to have a fan base. And, and it's, it's all about doubling and tripling your fan base, your cult fan base, my underground fan base, Necro's underground fan base. And then soon, <laughs> it's going to crack the surface and we're going to have zombies fucking running all around. You know what I mean? Fuck it. The zombie apocalypse of, of, of Necro and Hyde and PLR. Let's do it. Bottom line, I ain't working 17 years for anybody. So it's like, it's not even about me expecting that all of a sudden I'm going to be big and all that. It's it's right now, I've literally every day for probably 17 years have been answering fans online. Now, should I be bigger for that? It obviously didn't work out for me. You know what I mean? On that level. But did it work out for the point that I don't have no boss ever tell me? I would. I, if I wasn't doing hip hop, if I couldn't do hip hop, there's no fucking way I would ever have some boss telling me what to do. Like I would, it, I, would I would be an entrepreneur of some sort, doing something else, something. If and if it got to the point where everything flopped, then I would take it to, to you know to robbery and fucking and criminal and all that shit, because I did the people working with bosses, you know, and they abuse you. You know what I mean? They talk down to you. You know, do this, do that. It's like uh, eventually it's like nah, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like like and so like I already knew that from a little kid. I had those experiences as a little kid, and I learned. And maybe that's that's one of the only good things my father did teach me. The couple of few things he did, besides all the abuse and insults from him, but fucking, is that he forced me to work in places where there was no nepotism, where they fucking were brutal. You know what I mean? Like like work, fucking in this hot summer, going upstairs in Manhattan, doing sneak doing sneaker sale shit. And like, you know, making you fucking do envy, like fucked up corny shit, but shit that'll make you fucking hate it. Like, I'm not I'm never gonna fucking have anybody work for me, work for anybody. And um, so, you know what I'm saying? In the end of the day, I, I feel good about that. Like, I, ha I have freedom, basically, you know what I mean? Like, like, I've had freedom. I might not be Rockefeller rich and all that, but I don't gotta go work. Most, most people I, I speak to, they're like, I gotta get up in the morning and work. I get up anytime I fucking want. I don't know if that's a bad thing. So, you know what I mean? Because I've been doing it for years. Like, you know what I'm saying? I stay up for like 48 hours and just talk to fans online and answer every message or write a rhyme for 12 hours or make a beat or make a beat for like fucking three days. And like, like I could never do that if I had to come to work at the bagel shop or, or you know what I mean? Like, because you wouldn't have that freedom. You, you don't even know what day it is. Working with the working people will be like, yo, it's Monday. We don't fucking know what day it is. It's just another day to write rhymes and, you know, do whatever. But we get paid off our fucking talents, you know what I mean? I, I've been through it all with people barking at me. Fuck, I knocked out the Toys R Us manager. I mean, like, you know what I mean? People got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> the people screaming on you like, oh, you ain't my father. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get paid off my talents. But bagel, that's what we do. I had the bagel guy <laughs> screaming at me when I was, like, 13. I was like, faster, faster. I'm like, how fucking fast can I move the Viales, man? <laughs> It Yo, like I, used to, I, I used to work at Wallbaums. I used to work at and this dude was a mad pussy cokehead, and he used to fucking be like, "Like, you ain't doing the aisles good enough." And like, I remember thinking in my head, "Whoa, this dude don't know." Like, cause I was, I was on my thug shit, but like, I was, you know, a lot of all, all thugs before they fully, fully go criminal, they try to do little jobs. That's kind of what makes dudes go criminal. They try to do the three, four jobs, and and they not feeling it. And then they're like, fuck that, I'm about, I'm going to start robbing people, or I'm going to start selling weed, or I'm going to start selling coke, you know, and it's because society is, society is fucked up like that, like, like, like where you'll have a young kid who will be trying to do a job, and he'll get shitted on, you know what I mean, and, and, and you wonder why the fucking dude is, is looking, you know, now he's talking with his friends, fuck this shit, man, how are we going to, like, like, yeah, and then you got kids that want to smoke weed and they want to get high, you know what I mean? And you're telling them not to. And how you expect the kid? He's not gonna. He's gonna want to. And now, and now he don't have no money, so he's gonna go try to rob an old pocketbook. It's all. Everything leads to everything. If people understood the science, they would be better. So if I had a kid, I'll, I'll, which I don't yet, I'll teach my kid the way it should be done. You know what I'm saying? Like, like teach. They don't even teach you how to become a businessman in school. In regular, yeah, they don't teach you how to make money. They teach you how to work for people. It's like the government set it up in a way. I'm not going to get all deep and say Illuminati and all that bullshit. I'm saying for some weird reason, nobody ever taught me how to do my own business. I started at like 16 when I got kicked out of high school for fighting, and I wasn't even starting shit. It was kids coming up to me, yo, give me your hat, son. I was like, if you could take it, then you could have it. Dudes would try to take it. They get fucked up. I get kicked out by the dean. Immediately start selling weed. 
Think about how sick that is. I'm at a school and I get kicked out for protecting myself. Like, like that's, and this happens to kids everywhere, all over the world, you know what I mean? So, basically, some people get all fucked up and become bums and crackheads and, and, and all that, and then some of us become Necro and Mr. Hyde. All right, the last one. The uh, future projects, and then after that, let them know where to find everything, all the music, the merch, and everything. So, for the future project, what you guys cooking up? We're, we're nonstop working on shit. I'm working on a brand new album right now. It's called Much of Madness, More of Sin, and the title, the single is out on iTunes right now. iTunes, Amazon. All over the place. Go to um, also you can go to www.mrhydemerch.com for all things PLR and Mr. Hyde. Necro's got some new shit coming out. Let him know. Yeah, um, I just shot a video for a song. I don't want to reveal it yet, but it's a porn track, and it's uh, it's real monumental because just like the, the what I used and the sample, the concept. You know, I just don't want to drop it on people yet, but like it, it's gonna be real fire. And um, I'm not going to say it competes with Who's Your Daddy because Who's Your Daddy is a song that I've been getting blowjobs for the last 15 years from. Well, not 15 years because they dropped in 05, but, like, I'm literally girls are sucking dick for her 10 years later. It's like, that's how you know shit's classic. If you drop, you know, because, yeah, but, like, it's, like, crazy because oh, that's what they bring up. What do you like of mine? Who's Your Daddy? It's like, well, wow, that song fucking did well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. And it's, it's getting me 20-year-olds, too, like, nonstop. So, this is a new track that's kind of fucking crazy. But, you know, like I said, it's very hard to outdo your, some of your best shit, you know what I mean? But it's, this is a powerful one, and we shot a dope video. And um, I, I, you know, I just think it'll be a good look. It'll be like a million views type of situation. And then we shot another one video, which is just hard, like kind of like, like a boom bap kind of, a necro boom bap type shit, you know what I mean? And I, and, um, but lyrically real fly. And um, I shot some videos, and then Sid from Slipknot got up in the video. And we did some kind of like this alien scene where, like, yeah, Real Wolf did both videos. You know what I mean? Shout out to Real Wolf. You know, we got a dude sitting right there named Amir, who is uh, one of the um, coordinators and owners of Real Wolf with Tom. And um, they, they worked on the videos. And um, we did a shit with Sid from Slipknot, who I worked with in the past. You know, Sid is one of the first platinum dudes that hollered at me in 2001. And it was like, yo, this is Sid from Slipknot. He emailed me. Yo, come hang. I'm like, yeah, right. And Slipknot is messaging me. These dudes is platinum. And it turned out he was real. He brought me backstage. We was chilling. It was like a 10,000 venue. And I'm chilling with him. So he ended up getting on my album. I done, haven't done nothing with him in 10 years. But because they was chilling with him because this whole knot fest thing has been popping. Um, we did like this alien kind of scene. Like, like where, where we're dressed up kind of like alien. In my video, it's just he's just cameoing while rapping, but it look it looks crazy. So I got them two things, and um, I'm just working on a lot of joints. Can I finish? <laughs> You're assuming that that I don't know what I'm doing. Pop your head off. Just popped in my head. So I have something dropping December 16th called Sadist Hits. It's a greatest hits. Yeah, and uh, it's 15 songs like Who's Your Daddy and fucking uh, you know uh. Our head split, most of the death stick. You know, a lot of songs I do live. And then I put five extras on there because, you know, people don't want to buy physicals these days. But the artwork's real fly. So I have a new single called Pop Your Head Off, which we'll probably shoot tomorrow. Pop Your Head Off is just gully gutter. You know, the beat's super hard. And I'm just rapping criminal, gun-toting, mentioning, you know, gangsters from movies. Like that, you know, just kind of like that situation. And, uh... It, the, the hook is mad hard, so you can imagine, pop your head off. We do something like, you know, real gully on it. And um, that's going to be another video. So that'll drop. And then um, I might have a meeting tomorrow with fucking, with a with a, a acting agency. It uh, Like it's a junkie flick. And I played like, uh, you know, one of the junk, homeless junkies in the street and whatever. So it just played at the Lincoln Center, which in New York is like fucking gully. Lincoln Center is like... Uh, up like where they, all the classical people play and they do fucking concerts. So, uh, you know, we, we, I make moves, you know what I mean? Bottom line, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? You're just living day from day and every day's got to be an ambitious move to do something quality because then you're just, you're being stagnant, you know what I mean? But bottom line, we're all going to die. The reality is everybody, you know what I mean? Knock on fucking metal. Somebody's going to die. We're all going to fuck it. Every second someone dies, someone just died. Another one's dead. And again, someone just died. What that means is you just got to enjoy your fucking life because in the end, nobody gives a fuck in the end of the day. Like, do we give a shit about George Washington? What the fuck he did? We do, but we don't. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 like you worried about you. you know what I mean? I'm worried about me. We're not thinking of George Washington. He chopped the cherry J. You know what I mean? It's in the book. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to give a fuck. Like, dudes of 300 fucking years from now, they're going to be worried about their milk and they're fucking getting their dick sucked while we're going to be corpses. So you just got to enjoy your day and make shit that you like. You know what I'm saying? And get little 20-year-olds to blow you and make money. You know what I mean? Rapping. You know what I'm saying? You want links? Sausage links? Which li- which which links? Which links? What do you mean? Links to our websites? Yo, you need to check out necroproduct.com. And you get that pre-order sadist hits. You need to check out facebook.com forward slash necrohiphop. Like me on Facebook. You know what I mean? And um, have your girls send me a lot of naked pictures. I get about three girls a day sending spread eagle pictures. Some will have wretched faces. You know, you ratchet cunt. The fuck are you doing? Stop fucking messaging me, all right? Message Hyde instead. <laughs> so he could piss off his wife. Hi, Kareen. So basically, um, nah, you know, I'm just making jokes. But I'm saying, you know, these, these chicks, sometimes they're fucking harassive. And um, I like to get harassed by them, though. Keep it up. And um, Twitter, Necro's God. Very egotistical fucking handle. And um, Instagram, Necro Hip Hop. Okay? Go on all these fucking annoying, boring, life-sucking fucking social networks and support me and make me more famous. Because all I care about is fucking 20-year-olds. That's it. And Mr. High, tell your shit now. Oh, and much respect to you. To you. To you. Victor. Irv Gotti. And pause. I said before, www.mrhydemerch.com for all merchandise. <clears throat> Hide Beast Man, forward, you know, the forward slash face, the Facebook forward slash Hide Beast Man. <laughs> we got uh, on Instagram, the Instagram is fucking uh, Mr. Hyde 666777 on Instagram. Check out for the new single, it's on iTunes. Much of Madness, more of Sin. Demon Chant is next. Fucking demons are gonna be under your bed sucking you under. The boogeyman is real. I'm here. Coming for you. Open the closet. I'll be there. <laughs> Necro. Mr. Hyde. New York, up in Cali, motherfucker. PLR. Undergroundhiphopblog.com. Pause one. Peace. Yo, yo, Mr. Hyde. Psychological Records. Repping right now for undergroundhiphopblog.com. Go check that shit the fuck out. Those are my peoples, man. Go fucking check it, Underground Hip Hop Blog. Yo, what up? This is Necro, straight out of Brooklyn, New York, Psychological Records, and you're checking out Underground Hip Hop Blog. If you don't fucking check it out, I will send a blob to your fucking house, you cocksucking faggot, okay? You need to look at this fucking website, study it all fucking day, email Victor, Fucking ideas. Hey, Vic, let's fucking fuck that girl in the ass. And he'll report on it. But he'll do it in a hip-hop way. Okay? You dirty gay. You know he ain't gonna fucking, fucking print this one. This is too fucked up. I fucked up. We'll put this mic up your asshole. <laughs> Victor knows exactly what he's fucking doing, okay? Asking me for a drop. I'll fucking drop. I'll drop your fucking girl on her fucking head if she doesn't blow me. All right? Peace. Respect. Die. Undergroundhiphopblog.com exclusive.